Hey everybody, it's Jimbo, and welcome back to another lesson of introduction to Corn Shell. So today we are going to see how you determine the length of the contents of a variable. Now in Corn Shell, it's actually pretty easy to do that. Here is the statement that does it, and let's break this down. So you start out with a variable name. And before it, you put a pound sign or a number sign. And you surround this with the dollar sign squiggly brace, squiggly brace. And what this will give you is the length and characters of a variable, in this case, var name. Excuse me the length of the contents of this variable right here. So let's take a look at a few examples. And in our first example, we have a variable called var1. Its contents are the words tennis balls. And if I'm doing my math correctly, that is 12 characters wide, tennis is 6, space is 1, and balls is 5, so that's 12 characters. So the first thing we do is these two lines. And we're just printing out the contents right here of var1. And if you notice, I put the colons before and after. You can see where the contents of this variable begin and end. And then in the next line, I lined up the colons here, and I printed some numbers that represent columns. And in this case, it's 1 through 9, 0, 1, 2, 3. So this is 13 columns wide. So when we run these two commands here, it should say, or it should print, var is and then the contents in the colons. And then it should print the column numbers underneath it. And we should see that the contents of var1 are going to be 12 characters wide. And after, we just print a blank line. And then we print the line that shows how many characters var1 is. So looking at the contents of the print statement, we have var1 length colon and once again this is the same as this so we take var1 we precede it by a number sign and we enclose this in a dollar curly brace and curly brace afterward and then we just have a period at the end to signify the end of a sentence and technically, because I don't have a verb in here, this isn't a sentence. So let's run this and see what the output looks like. So here's the name of our program. And as you can see, it said var1 is, and it showed tennis balls. And as you can see, it is, in fact, 12 characters wide. And our command, our corn shell command, to tell how wide or how many characters the contents of a variable has worked, because it showed 12. And once again, I put that little sneaky thing in there that causes the output to pause for us. So back inside of our program, once again, that's our statement. Var1 length is dollar sign, curly brace, pound, variable name, curly brace. So once again, just think of taking a variable name, putting a pound sign in front of it, and then enclosing all of that in a dollar sign, curly brace, curly brace. So like I said, I did that little waiting trick where you say hit carriage return 
to continue and I read in nothing. So it takes the contents, whatever you do, whatever you enter, puts it in nothing, and then does absolutely nothing with it so that it will cause the output to wait for the user to hit enter or enter any input and then hit enter. So next, let's look at what happens when we define a variable and we explicitly say it's seven characters wide. So we're using our typeset dash capital L command and we're saying our variable var2 is going to be exactly seven characters wide and it's left justified. Now this just defines variable 2. It doesn't put any contents, excuse me. This just defines var2. It doesn't put any contents in it. So what is the length of this? Is it seven characters wide at this point? Well, let's find out. Let's print a blank line. Let's remind the user of the program that var2 is presently empty. And let's see how wide it is with our command right here. Once again, you take the variable name, you precede it by a pound sign, and enclose that with a dollar curly brace, curly brace. And afterward, we're going to assign a variable to, excuse me, we are going to assign contents to var2. In this case, we're assigning the word dog. We tell the user, hey, we put dog into var2. Now, what, are, what is the length of the contents of var2? Will it be three characters wide, because that's how long dog is, or will it be seven characters wide, because that's how long var2 is when we created it? Let's look at the output, and once again, the real question for me is what is the length of var2 after you created it, but you haven't really assigned anything to it? Is it seven characters wide? Or because you haven't assigned anything to it, is it zero characters wide? And down here, once you've assigned the word dog to it, is var2 three characters wide for the word dog, or is it seven characters wide, because that's how wide we define var2. Back at our output, we hit carriage return, and when var2 has nothing in it, the length is actually zero. So even though you assign seven characters, or reserve seven characters for var2, if you don't assign anything to it, it takes up zero length. However, once you assign anything to it, it then becomes the length that you defined with the typeset-l command.